G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. Let's go. My boyfriend asked for a paternity test for our child. As soon as the results come and show that he is the father, I am leaving him. So I'm a new mum to a baby boy who is my pride and joy, and though it's been a roller coaster adjusting to taking care of a baby, the past few months have been great. Tiring, but great. I have a boyfriend of three years who is the first person relationship-wise that I have ever loved, and I thought that we were doing great as new parents, but also partners. On Friday, he came home and asked me for a paternity test. Just like that. It was completely out of the blue. I was putting away the dishes, and he asked for one, like he was asking what was for dinner. I'm a different race from him, but our child, apart from the skin tone, is literally his mirror image from pictures I had seen of him when he was a baby. I was stunned when he asked, and his reasons were that he had to be sure he was the father. He had to have that certainty. All I remember as he was speaking is just immediately feeling pain. The man I love doesn't trust me. He would actually believe that I would F someone else, cheat on him, and then try to pass off another man's baby as his. I have never ever given him reason to think that I would cheat on him. I have tried to be transparent and communicated, and it wasn't enough. He told me that he would give me time to think about this, that he wouldn't go behind my back and do the test, but for our relationship to move forward, he needs to be 100% sure. He repeated this because he, in his words, needed me to realize how serious he was. After thinking for a couple of days, I'm going to allow this paternity test because I have nothing to hide. I never cheated, and would have never cheated on him. Once it's proven that he's the father, I'm ending it. Leaving the same day, and I'm going to try my best to be a cooperative co-parent with him. In the meantime, I'm coming up with my exit plan, a place to live, and a lawyer to work out a custody arrangement, and court. I can't even tell my family or my friends right now, because they would go nuclear, and my first priority is our child. I hope the test was worth it to him. I'm not asking for advice or reassurance to explain his side. I'm just realizing this part of my life is now over. What a way to start the new year, huh? In the comments, the best advice that I heard about a divorce or separation is to say, this is now a business decision. Make all your decision making be from that point of view. Let your friends and family, your clergy, if any, and your therapist be your emotional support system. Kudos to you for stating outright that you are going to try to co-parent. You sound level-headed despite what is going on. Did you ask what suddenly made him change his mind? Who is he talking to? I'm thinking a group of friends got into his head and he's not going to expect her to leave, especially as he said, for this relationship to go forward. Or he's cheating himself and paranoid that you are doing the same. Or just looking for an easy escape, because parenthood is too much and he feels trapped. He wants to ditch the kid, but doesn't want to feel guilty for it. Which sounds like an ultimatum. You just had a baby, you were helpless, you must do whatever I say, because you were totally at my mercy, and I have all the power. Well, surprise. It also sounds like, are you sure it's my baby? I want to be somewhere else, and if it's not mine, I won't have to pay any child support. He sounds kind of checked out, whatever it is. Well then, at least she'll already have a paternity test handy to prove that it's his kid for child support. I told my ex-boyfriend this after our miscarriage. He said he didn't believe he could produce a baby that was that genetically weak. I told him he was free to DNA test her remains, but if he did, he would be paying for the test on his own. I would be taking back the car, it was mine, he just drove it everywhere, removing him from my insurance, and once the results came back, everything of his would be thrown out into the mud. He did it. My daughter was his, and I did everything I said above. Turns out he was cheating, and the other girl was pregnant. I hope you get out safely, and he can kick rocks. The craziest thing about the that genetically weak comment is that 50% of pregnancies end as miscarriages, and half of those are due to a serious chromosomal defect. His ego is so inflated that he thinks that basic biology doesn't apply to his gametes. Most of those end before the woman even realizes she is pregnant, so people don't know how common this is. Miscarriages are tough. Wife had one with the first pregnancy. The way we got through it was by saying this was her body's way of saying, hey, 
Something's not right here. We need to clear out and start fresh. And now we have got two beautiful little nerds. Two beautiful, non-sleeping, always peeing, always pooping little nerds. Did you know that you've got to feed and water these things every damn day? Sheesh. Wish someone would have told me that before I went and got myself into this pickle. I'm a lawyer with over 20 years experience, mainly in relationship property and trust litigation, and this has become really common in the last five years. It's really sad to see. From my experience, it's usually family members, parents and siblings, very rarely grandparents, that plant the seed for this. I have never seen a couple reunite once it's happened. And now, on to the update. We did the paternity test that my boyfriend wanted. So my post was removed, so I'm going to post it here. It's been a couple of weeks since I posted, and I've just been navigating things after. I'm going to call my boyfriend Mason to keep things clear. This is going to be long, I'm sorry. Also, why post on Reddit? I don't know guys, I don't know. To clarify a few things, one, we are different races, but to my knowledge, his family plus extended is more than okay with it. His mother actually set us up. I went to a dinner party and he and I were the only single people who had been invited and we just hit it off. She admitted to trying to set us up for months. 2. We have had no issues with cheating or any situations where things could be sketchy during the years that we have been together. We also haven't broken up or taken any breaks. 3. Our son is his mirror image. My boyfriend confided to his cousin about the paternity test a couple of days after he asked me, and the cousin told his wife and it spread like wildfire, especially in their family group chats. His mum put an end to the speculation though by doing a half and half pick of him and our son, but also by adding some additional individual pics of both of them. She posted the pictures in the family group chat and said, look at the old pics I found of Mason. After people commented, she said, actually the one on the right is my grandchild, or this one isn't Mason. Literally, the family members just thought that it was the same person in all of the pics and that some of the photos were taken in darker lighting. That is how much our son looks like him, which I find funny, but also a little annoying. Like, I carried you for nine months, all for you to be a copy of your dad? I didn't see the group chat, but the topic died down when his mum did that. Anyway, we talked. When I had made the first post, I was so angry and planned to leave, but the anger was quickly replaced by hurt once I calmed down. I realized if I blindsided him like that, I would be doing the exact same thing that he did to me, when he asked me for a paternity test. I planned to ask him to talk, but I also didn't want him to think that I was trying to get out of the test. So beforehand, I booked an appointment at two different paternity test locations. I asked him to talk when he came home, and I made sure that our child was at my mum's. I told him that whatever happened with this talk, the paternity test had been booked and would go forward. I basically asked him about his reasoning, and when he started having doubts about paternity. Was it a previous relationship? Did cheating happen? He said it was about a week before he asked me that he started having doubts. He said that he was on his lunch break one day just reading articles, and he clicked on an old article about a man who found out his three kids weren't his after like 20 years. This led him into a rabbit hole of podcasters and YouTube videos that encouraged men to ask for paternity tests. While he thought those podcasters were idiots, he said that paternity was an exception. He said his reasoning was that some women have done this before and he just wanted to be sure. He said, You know it's yours because the baby comes out of you, but how do I know? The test gives me that assurance. I was hurt by that, but I decided to explain how I felt. I said that for him, it was a rational request, while for me, it was basically him saying that he didn't trust me. It was him saying that he believed I would cheat on him, get pregnant, have him emotionally, financially, and physically support me during the pregnancy and birth, and basically lie to him while he raised another man's child. I told him that I understand that women had done this before, but the fact that he thought that I would do this to him is what bothered me. I told him the truth, that when I was angry, I had planned to leave, and that I even went looking into a lawyer, a co-parenting plan, and a new place to live. He was stunned that I would leave for something so small. I found that to be a weird kind of irony, that he believed issuing an ultimatum about a paternity test and basically accusing your partner of cheating was something small. 
I told him I was really hurt by what he said, that I was still hurt, but that if he needs his peace of mind, that we would do it. He asked about our relationship, and I told him I didn't know. We did the test two days later, got the results back after three days. He opened both of them, and to the surprise of no one, he is the dad. He was visibly relieved when he read the tests, and I don't know why that hurt more. It's been about two weeks from the results, and I'm still really hurt. God, I sound so pathetic. I feel pathetic. I thought the results would maybe relieve some of that, but it didn't. It's like a switch clicked when he asked for the test, and I can't find a way to click it off. I'm pretty sure postpartum is playing a part in this because all I do is cry, and I wasn't like this before. I've also moved into the spare room, something he was against, but I felt bad because apart from when our son is awake, I am sad all the time. I am looking for a therapist, I don't know how people find therapists they like so quickly by the way, and he wants to do couples therapy, and he's looking for one too. He already has a few appointments booked just to try them out. He wants to move on, marriage, more kids in the future, and go back to where we are, and thinks that our relationship is now stronger. While I'm just thinking, our relationship right now is weaker than a person on stilts. I don't know if I would say that we're together. The physical affection is gone. I'm not in the right mindset, and I don't want him to touch me. We rarely talk about anything but the baby. It's awkward, and I'm trying to find a way back to where we were, and I just can't see how. I'm going to try to fix this and try therapy, individual and couples, but I just have this feeling that this is basically a sinking ship. I hope I'm wrong. I want very much to be wrong. Edit, I really appreciate the kind messages. I know some people are worried, but I have a contingency plan in place. I have a lawyer, I have gotten a childcare slash custody plan worked up during these two weeks. I've told my family who are mostly close by. I have a rental property that I own and can go to. Our finances are separate, so I'm good there. I know myself, and I know I'm not in the right headspace right now. I'm staying in the spare room, there is no affection. Therapy, individual or couples, will hopefully help me, and will hopefully reaffirm that I had the right idea in the beginning. It's not as easy to move when there is a child, so I'm making sure that I am mentally well, our child is good, and then I'll make a decision. Thank you though for all the kindness and perspectives. I really appreciate it. In the comments, so is he going to ask this of you for every kid? Or was this enough for him to realize you would never, and he was just a paranoid crap? Because this feeling you have is valid, and he never seemed to validate it at all. Did he apologize for hurting you? Like, did he show any form of genuine human growth after this? Girl, leave him. Instead of being a grown man and talking to you about his fear, he decided to ask for one. And also the fact that he doesn't see how he's in the wrong just shows that he isn't capable of taking responsibility for his action, which will be a problem in the future. Get out before you waste more time with him and find someone who can be a grown man and take responsibility. Did he even apologize after both tests came back? My six-month-old is the splitting image of his father as well. Can't imagine not having my husband's trust. Reading your post, it feels like you were done with him. Get therapy for yourself and heal up before anything else. Wishing you and your son all the best. Thank you for providing an update. I just want to say that your feelings are valid, and I find it to be a red flag that your husband doesn't respect your feelings or thought process about any of this. He has no consideration for your thoughts or feelings, and wants to proceed with the relationship as if he didn't just publicly accuse you of cheating to his entire family and all of your friends. He has provided no apology and seems to be guilt-tripping you for not wanting to share the same room or bed with him. Your postpartum isn't much of a factor in what your husband just did to you. If this wasn't your personal situation, you'd more than likely have a very different opinion of this had it have happened to one of your family members or a close friend. It's fine if you want to continue to give your marriage a chance, but please do not abandon yourself in the process or allow him to steamroll over your emotions and gaslight you into emotionally regulating for him and make everything about his feelings. It's important that you surround yourself with friends and family that support you and don't warp your sense of reality. 
please don't sacrifice your mental health and dignity for a one-sided marriage where he'll know from this point on that he'll be able to make wild accusations, publicly humiliate you, then have his feelings coddled and prioritized while you drown in heartache. Continuing the marriage should largely revolve around his actions going forward, and it doesn't even seem like he's given you an apology. Wanting a paternity test is something to discuss prior to entering into a relationship and prior to impregnating someone. Is he going to ask for a paternity test every time that you have children? And now onto the final update. I left. Things have gone downhill and, under advisement, I can't really discuss it until things have been settled in court. I guess I'm really a cautionary tale on what can go wrong. Please, if you have concerns with your partner, discuss things beforehand, especially before you have a child. Thank you again for your different perspectives. Hoping to have everything settled eventually. In the comments, I was just thinking about your situation and I saw this post. I'm glad you left, but I'm sorry that you had to go through this at all. You didn't deserve your husband's lack of trust. I hope you're doing okay. I'm so sorry. Totally understand why you can't update. Wish you the best. Sad to say, after what I've read on Reddit, a lot of men are going to destroy their marriages. I'm so glad. I'm sure after an amount of time and the dust settles that you will be much happier without the man who was practically accusing you of cheating and manipulating him into raising a kid and then gaslighting your feelings about it. Remember these things and you will be golden. Best of luck. I hope you and your child are safe. I know you will be happier together without whatever toxic crap he was throwing at you this time. You are strong, your child is healthy and happy with you, everything you are doing for them is the right thing. Never doubt it or yourself. My ex kept making jokes about our son not being his, getting a paternity test, etc. And my response was always, go right ahead. Long story short, he was cheating. My ex never bothered with the paternity test after our eldest. He always says I was cheating with my best friend, but I'm white, my best friend is very dark-skinned black, and my ex is mixed. All four of our children are white passing, and all but our eldest daughter are blazing lily white. He, however, consistently cheated throughout our marriage and nearly made me miscarry our youngest because he gave me chlamydia. Bonus, I'm mildly allergic to the antibiotics they most commonly prescribe for it. They give me unmedicated labor level cramps for about 24 hours after taking them. So guess who got to writhe in pain and nausea for 24 hours in her second trimester? Bonus, bonus, the antibiotics gave me bacterial vaginosis. Bonus, 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 the medication for the BV gave me a yeast infection. Time for you to buy a lottery ticket, because I think you've used up all your bad luck already. After that, I don't think she even needs to buy the ticket. The wind is just magically flying it straight into her pocket. Our next post is titled, My 21 male boyfriend refuses to get a job and it is ruining our relationship. I, female 19, have been with my boyfriend, male 21, for just under a year, 11 months or so. I finished college with great qualifications. I live in England for context, as I've always been a hard worker and knew what I wanted out of life from a young age. I am now in the police and adore my career. It's what I've always wanted. My boyfriend is an entirely different kettle of fish. He has zero GCSEs, no college qualifications, and has only managed to hold down one job his entire life for eight months, and he left because he didn't want to go on with his boss. I wasn't with him at the time of this job. And since then, he has gotten no job offers and turns down the one job offer he got because he didn't like the sound of it. I have cut him so much slack with this job situation. He was raised in an awful household. He was consistently moved from house to house depending on what boyfriend his alcoholic mother had at the time. These boyfriends commonly abused my boyfriend and his mother. I assumed this would have jeopardized any education around 12 to 16 years of age. However, no job in almost one year? He now lives with his grandmother, claims universal credit, and spends it all on tattoos or cigarettes, turns down anything the job center offers him, and at the cost of sounding cruel, he lives in a pigsty. Last time I visited his house, I ended up covered in bed bug bites, had to bathe in dead flies, there was rotten food in the bathroom bin, and the kitchen was full of moldy, dirty cups and plates. 
He cannot be bothered to clean mess, even though he does nothing all day but sit at his PC and play video games. I have offered to help him get into therapy, but he insists he doesn't have a poor mental state. I wrote his CV, I referred him to some of my family members, as some of them own businesses, I suggested attending college again, and wrote a personal statement for him to send to local colleges. I have tried everything, and to no avail. I am moving out very soon, as I have found a lovely rented property in my area, but I can't let my boyfriend live with me because I am too scared he will not find a sustainable job and will eventually lean on my income. My family do not like him anymore. I come from a fairly well-off background, and they just view him as a lazy mess who won't pull his weight as an adult. However, I do love this man. He almost worships the ground I walk on, and he's amazing to be around. But at this point, his affection is not enough to keep me in the loop. I am so lost on this, and I'm starting to think that he is almost convinced that he will never work in his life. I don't know what to do. In the comments... I'm having a difficult time understanding why a capable, smart woman with a solid career would choose to stay with a grown man who refuses to work and doesn't even care if he's living in filth. OP says, Hey, thank you for this. I just needed people to honestly push my head in and make me realize finally, I'm not the best when it comes to breakups. No one is, of course. I think I'm just sticking around to see something that won't happen. He has all the qualities of an amazing boyfriend, just not the job and education. I've had awful relationships up until this, and he treats me well, but I think I'm more of a trophy to him than anything, which is not fun. You're welcome. You've grown up, he hasn't, and there is zero indication that he's going to change. OP says, He is adamant that he's been trying to find a job since November 2022. I'm not sure where you're from, but in England, it is extremely easy to find a job with zero qualifications, so I find that hard to believe. He can't work in customer-facing jobs either, as he has face tattoos. Very likely not to pass interview stage. I know, he's a 21-year-old messy, dirty, jobless child. Come on, don't waste your 20s on this guy. What are you doing with this lazy, dirty, aimless loser? You need to see your own worth and do better. Dump him. OP says, I know I really do. I'll meet him tomorrow and address this, and I'll try my best to get an update. But I work very irregular shifts. I've said in previous comments that I just needed this out there so people could cut it with me and tell me what's what. Thank you for your comment. I appreciate it. What does he do for you exactly? Honestly trying to figure this one out. OP says, Rather embarrassing to admit, but the affection. I've had a few relationships and all ended by me due to no respect for me and no effort. But other than that, nothing. Frankly, this dude doesn't appear to respect you enough to make an effort either. It's great that he's affectionate and says he loves you, but he isn't willing to lift a finger to show it. OP says, haven't been told that before, but that is very true, so thank you. Good perspective to give me. And now on to the update. Hi all, sorry for the delay on the update, I've been very busy on very long shifts with work, so it completely skipped my mind. I went round to his house on Saturday after I had a brief break from work, and said to him that I was ending the relationship because of his lack of ambition and laziness. As guest, he broke down into tears and promised he would try harder and sign on to other agencies that would help him do better, work on cleanliness, etc., I told him that I had waited long enough and tried to help him, but he refused to take it and hopefully me leaving will give him a bigger push to do better and do well for himself. And then came the self-harm threats. I asked to leave as a while had passed and I had said what I'd wanted to say and he claimed he was already self-harming from the way his life was and me leaving will push him over the edge. I said I still cared about him, but I couldn't help him with that, and he followed me to my car, and I drove off. I was worried he was sincere in what he said, so I rang emergency services for a welfare check. I also blocked him on everything to stop him from potentially spam calling me. That's the end of that chapter. It does suck, but I knew that I needed better. Also means I don't have to worry about moving into my own place with someone leeching off my wages. Thank you to all the strangers here for the advice. I appreciate it a lot. In the comments, 
I just wanted to say good for you for ending this, as it's the healthy choice for yourself. In future relationships, value actions, not words. You said he worshipped the ground you walked on, but it sounds like he did that in words only, which are cheap and easy to spew out. Pay attention to what the people close to you are doing, not what they are saying, especially when it comes to saying what they are going to do. It's easy to say, I plan to do this, that, and the other, but do they actually follow through? Even if it's just small steps they are making towards doing what they said. Of course, some things take time, but if you don't see consistent, measurable action, it's just words. Value action, not words. Life can be hard enough sometimes without dragging an anchor around. Good for you. Well said. Having a partner should make life's burdens a little easier to carry, or at least more pleasant while everyone pulls their own weight. Also, she ended it perfectly. Crocodile tears and he said he'd do better? Nope. Already had enough time. Hope this teaches you a lesson for the next time, and that you'll work on improving. Manipulative self-harm threats? Can't control what you do? Hope you get therapy. Drive off. Don't engage. Call a wellness check and block because his actions are not your responsibility. Absolute 10 out of 10 execution on OP's part. She was clearly fed up with his BS. You don't often see such maturity from a 19-year-old. And that's where I'm going to end today's story, guys. I do hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.